inside of this tutorial I'm pretty much going to be explaining how to use Moto and Unity or how I use it at least. Now I use Moto to create all of my content, my game content or if I just want to do still imagery. But in this case I'm going to be designing something for a level. So I get a cube and I move it up on the grid. This is how I design my buildings. I select a specific um, a polygon, a specific polygon, bevel it out, scale it out, and I move that polygon upwards, giving this effect. I can bevel it in or out, however my liking. And in this case, I want to take the top polygon, move it in, and push it down a little bit. I want to do it a few more times. And um, yeah. Now you can also select the edges of any of any corner on any mesh. In this case, I want to select the top corners so I can round the top, giving it more of a realistic look or smoother look. So I'll do that. You can change the round level to whatever you want. I'm gonna round the edges too, so I can. Oh, actually, I need to create some vertices. This is how I get windows or whatever. And I'm just kind of doing a quick run through. This program is capable of so much more than what I'm showing you right now. I'm just kind of showing you a basic way to design buildings and how I use it sometimes when I'm kind of in a rush or I just want to model something in a timely fashion that still looks slightly presentable. So I want to take that whole mesh after I create the windows, scale it up a little bit. I can scale it up, sideways, down, wherever, however I want the building to be inside of my scene, my game. So I take the corners and I bevel those in too to round off the edges. It's a really good look to the buildings, I think. Now, I could, all, I could take these buildings and I could multiply them as far as the eye can see, given an illusion of a city. I can change the size and however I want. But I have to create one building first. That's the key to designing that I've found is illusions, which you can't see. Your mind will make up for it by imagining. So I'm going to take these windows and I bevel them in. And zoom out, bevel to the corner, deselect. Now this is my camera. This is the this is the view that I use when I want to capture extreme art, real extreme realism within Moto. Use the camera view. Now I'm going to take the mesh. I'm going to select it. I'm going to duplicate it by going into the shader tree on the right side. Take the cube, right click, duplicate, W, move over, I'm gonna move it back a little bit, give it a little random look like it's becoming a building. Do the same on the right side. I think I want to scale this one out just a little bit bigger just for a little bit of variation because it's all about, because the world is nothing but variation. So my, sheen's, my uh, scene should be, should have just as much variation. Okay, so I select both Actually, I want to create a plane now because the buildings can't just be floating in midair. So I take a flat plane, I subdivide it by hitting the D key like three times, bam, bam, bam. Take it, I scale it out. Spin a little bit bigger. And then I move it just so it starts to connect with the buildings that I've just designed. And I can take that by going to the animated mode, tap, move it up a little bit. Bam, right there. But see, the windows are kind of getting cut off, so I kind of want to move it down. Select the, the left building, move it up just a little bit. And yes. I'm also going to be showing you how I take these and import it into actual gameplay. I already have a scene preloaded that I'm working on right now that illustrates how I take and import what I create in this program, Moto, into a different program, which is the actual engine for the games to be rendered and played in so I can take a gun and shoot it. Now my terrain tool is acting pretty strange. I think it's because I need to I, need, I think I need to close this program out, but this this tool that I'm trying to use, it usually works flawlessly and it looks beautiful. But it's how it's how you use to create mountains in the scene and holes or craters and stuff like that as you can see. But it's acting a little bit it's scaling too high for some reason. What in the world is going on here? Oh, God. Anyways, but you can make crazy stuff like this and smooth it out so it looks like a mountain like that. 
Let me, but let me get rid of this. So this is a little bit ridiculous right now. I'm going to show you the lighting. I go to my render tab and I want to scale the actual preview box in the upper left hand corner out of these three boxes in the viewport. I want to scale it out a little bit bigger so you can see what I'm talking about. Now everything in this tree on the right hand corner inside of Modo affects what you see in the upper left hand corner. So, yes, this view right here. Okay, so I go to render and then I go to global illumination. I enable it. Bam, I instantly get realistic lighting on my buildings. I go to directional lighting and this program has real time lighting so I can type in a specific time like, oops, that's the wrong time, like six o'clock and it'll give me that exact lighting. I can also change the positioning of the lighting by selecting the north offset. I can continue to just put it pretty much wherever I want. And then this is just my scene without me actually texturing the building, giving it more realism by adding brick and then going behind it and adding a sky and then changing the texture of the ground or something. Okay. Well, that's enough for Moto. I'm going to show you how I take these and I import it into actual game content. So I, I'm going to open up Unity. Oops. That is not Unity, that is screen flow. Okay, I'm gonna open up Unity, which is the game. This is actually a design of the kitchen that I designed. You can you can look at it by checking it out on my Facebook. But I imported it into this program, which is called Unity. And it is a program where you can pretty much well, I don't know what I'm talking about. It's a level program pretty much for creating games and whatever you want. So I took what I made in Moto architecturally and I imported it into game content so I can make stuff like Modern Warfare, Left 4 Dead, all that stuff. Now the only problem with my computer is that I don't have a graphics card in it yet. So this is all I get to see is just, I get to design with a lag. You see how the video is kind of lagging? And it pretty much messes up my workflow because I can't go all out and keep continue adding to my world to make it more of a, you know, um, a realistic environment. I know it's kind of dark. I'm going to change the lighting so you can see more of the detail inside of the kitchen after I imported it into this program. But it is very, very, very great. And I, you know, once I save enough money and I buy a more powerful computer, I'm going to be able to render more extreme things. It's going to be more visible. And um, the scene, let me, let me brighten it up real quick. Okay. This is my kitchen right here. I actually imported it into the Unity. Now it's not texture, obviously. It's white. But that's the default color, the default texture of the blank meshes that I import from Unity, excuse me, from Modo to Unity. I had to go in and individually select the counters, the um, metal, the doors on the fridge, the everything, and so, and texturize those metal and just I gotta do all that crap. But this is just pretty much how it works. This is what I really love doing. It's it's really fun. It really is. I mean, after you bypass all the stress of actually figuring out how to do it, it turns into an art for, an art form. Oh, where's my roof at? I can I just let me just this is the grid inside of Unity. Let me turn off the backdrop. You can see the grid below. Our whole world is manifested of nothing but grids. I feel like a god inside of these programs. I can just actually manipulate them and move around them in three three D space. So people say, people always ask me, "Am I just doing still imagery, or am I did I take that from Photoshop and add photos?" No, I'm actually creating every individual piece of content and actually moving them where I want them to be, turning it into art or gameplay. That's what I'm doing. People have belittled me actually that I a lot of people that I've met. But I think they only do that because they don't understand the depth of what I'm really trying to do and what's possible. Or what I'm really doing. I'm not trying to do it. I'm doing it. But yeah, this concludes our tutorial.